the Addy folks. Welcome to the NASCAR Duralast Cup Series second Lone Star 500. Here we go, folks. The patriotic event for the NASCAR Duralast Cup Series season. Patriotic paint schemes out and about here at Texas Motor Speedway for the second NASCAR Duralast Cup Series race here this season. And your pole sitter tonight, it is Cole Custer uh, driving the same car. He went to second place at the Daytona 500 with. Uh, of course, this is the, uh, the Daniel Suarez diecast from last year. But this is going to be a interesting race here. So many different paint schemes. Kind of like a wild card event when you consider so many of these cars have only ran once or twice in Dora Last Cup Series action. So, who's going to win tonight? Anything could happen. Unlike the All-Star race, points are available and we have a 40 die cast field. Holy cow, folks. Let's go and get the cars off pit road and get the unscripted die cast racing underway. Alrighty, folks. Here we go. 40 die casts, unscripted die cast racing. Here is a quick look at the rules. So this is how it works, guys. So we take a car, we push around the track. Wherever that car lands, we take it off and then we set it to the inside. So let's say we push Cole Custer and he ends up here. So we take his car, we set it here. We push the next car. This car would be William Byron, right? Well, if the nose of this car gets to the tail of this one, that's a completed pass. But if one car comes off the racetrack for any reason, that is an automatic DNF. It's unscripted racing. Anyone can win it. And of course, if one car comes off the racetrack and hits another car, that's a multi-car DNF. That's how the rules on NASCAR Duras Cup Series work. Very simple, very straight to the point. Here is Cole Custer, tonight's pole sitter. Let's go diecast racing, folks. Lone Star 500, hope you're having a great one. Here we go, folks, the final broadcast of 2020. Here we go, patriotic cup racing. Let's go. Shot out of a cannon goes the 41 car. Now, for those who tune in for the NASCAR Duralast Cup Series All-Star event a couple weeks ago, you would notice how the front straightaway was significantly different at Charlotte Motor Speedway. That's because it was an experimental test. And one run right there, that pretty much equivalent two laps at Charlotte Motor Speedway during the All-Star race because that's how significantly slower it was. This was a huge, huge um, experiment, and it didn't work, so we're going back to the traditional one. I tell you what, the speeds are so much higher. Here's William Byron in the Exalta Patriotic Camaro. And Byron up to second. Here's Greg Biffle with a great qualifying effort in the Castro Ford Mustang. And that car is about to go a lap down. I'm going to put Biffle right here, uh, one lane deeper to the infield because I want to make sure there's no confusion. Now... Here with Jimmy Johnson's 2019 Ally Patriotic car. I wanted to get the 2021 into today's race, but it just, it just, I couldn't logistically get it done. But here we go, folks. Jimmy Johnson in a Patriotic Ally Camaro. A decent run for the 48 car up to third place. Brand new paint scheme alert. Kevin Harvick in the Bush Light Patriotic Ford Mustang. Unfortunately, it's not that fast. Another brand new car. It's, well, it's actually a custom car. I built God knows when. Uh, Chase Elliott's Mountain Dew Liberty Brew Chevrolet Camaro. Yeah, 2020 Cup Series Elliott Custom. This was a cool diecast of Hill. Let's see how this thing runs. Newsflash, it sucks. Well, another crap car right there, uh, unfortunately, for the dying crew. But here's Eric Amarola in the Smithfield Patriotic Ford. Very fast lap up to third place. Here's Denny Hamlin in the FedEx Cares Toyota Camry. Decent lap for the 11 car, but not enough to get out front. And you can already see how the field's pretty well uh, spread out here. Each car only gets one push on my ads. But uh, here's another brand new car. Martin Truex Jr.'s 2020 Bass Pro Shops Patriotic Camry. Let's see how this car does. That thing's tail dragging. That thing is not fast. There are already three brand new race cars tonight, and all three of them suck. So that's great. Uh, speaking of new race cars, here is John Hunter Nemechek's Skag Power Equipment Ford Mustang. Ah, I don't know. Them Gold Series cars, sometimes they kind of, the, the wheels kind of grind with the axle, and uh, that one's not as fast. Here is Brad Kozlowski of the Miller Lite Patriotic Ford. 
Started out fast early on, but starting to fade back. Here's Alex Bowman in a, well, a one-race deal with Nationwide. There's no other patriotic car, so we're going to go with this one. The Alex Bowman 88 Nationwide Chevrolet Camaro. And uh, up to fifth place. Here's Ryan Blaney in the body armor Ford Mustang. And Blaney gets around Bowman. Here is Ty Dillon of the Geico Camaro. Eh, not a good run for the 13 crew. This car won the first Texas race of the season, the Dell Cobb Ford Mustang for Clint Boyer. Uh, can this car sweep Texas? This is the same exact die cast. I don't know if I'm going to make a race version of it. I don't know. But this is the same exact car since it left the racetrack. Uh, let's see how this car does. Shot out of a cannon. He's going to take it from Cole Custer. Well, would you believe that? Boyer is out front. 41 car, not so much. So Stuart Haas Racing kind of flexing on the competition here. Here's Logano, who's never won an NDCS race at the AAA Ford Mustang. Great run for the 22 car. Now look, this car ran the last Lone Star 500. It's the Buffet Racing South, Ross Chastain, Custom, Plan B, Sales, Camaro. But I wanted to give it another shot, right? I'm just going to say I worked on the, on the speed of this car, believe it or not, and uh, I'm very interested, interested to see how this car is going to run. So here we go, folks. Whoa! Now that's a fast car. Here's your Daytona 500 champion, Kurt Busch, on the gear and Chevrolet Camaro. And uh, not a good run right there for the Ganassi one car. Here is Bubba Loss Jr., the Air Force Chevrolet Camaro. Wow! Up to third place. Here's Eric Jones of the Craftsman Camry. And a very decent lap. Maybe he can hold on to a top ten. Here is Austin Dillon of the Dow Chemical Patriotic Chevrolet Camaro. Shot out of a cannon. Austin Dillon takes the lead. So the, the, the Bristol Night Race winner from last season takes the lead from Boyer. Puts Biffle a lap down, pretty much. Here's Kyle Busch and the Eminem's Patriotic Camry. Well, hello, Mr. Rowdy Bush. Well, I think we just seen a remarkably fast lap here. Um, that's a 2018 Toyota Camry, I might add. And uh, that thing just took the lead from Austin Dillon, who just took it from Clint Boyer. So right now, Kyle Busch is out front looking to win his second NASCAR Duralast Cup Series race. And uh, here's Ryan Newman, who just won the All-Star. He's cooking good with the Oscar Mayer Hot Dogs Ford Mustang. And uh, so far, no DNFs. Newman around William Byron. Here is Matt Kenseth in the Credit One Patriotic Camaro. That uh, car don't roll too well, but he's going to get around Joey Logano. Here's Matt Benedetto in the Motorcraft Quick Lane 4. Had a shot, but not good enough. All I'm going to say is that 18 car better watch out because uh, there's not much room over here. I can't do nothing about it, right? The inside walls are there. I can't move them back. Uh, I had to move it kind of back a little bit to get the 13 car there. So if a car gets low and clips at 18, that's a DNF, guy. So I'm just saying, watch out 18 car. Uh, here is Tyler Reddick at the number 8 Caterpillar Camaro. And uh, he gets around Amarola. You know, kind of shades of Richmond when Kevin Harvick was taken out by Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Stenhouse right here again. And, uh, of course, Truex was taken out as a lapdown car with that. Uh, Kyle Busch trying to navigate the lapdown cars. Gets him in a bind in 1 and 2. Uh, let's see how uh, Ricky Stenhouse will do. And uh, Kyle Busch has been spared. So Kyle Busch is out front trying to win the final Duras Cup Series race of 2020. Here's Chris Busher in the Patriotic Fast and All Four. And almost hit my line over here. Uh, he's going to get around Bowman. You know, unfortunately, I, 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 I'm almost ready to say Bowman is eliminated from championship realistic contention. Every single one of his die casts are slow. But here's Christopher Bell in the Procore Cameron. Good lap there. He's going to get around Busher. Here's Michael McDowell, the loves Ford Mustang. Pretty good lap right there. He'll get around the eight car. 
Here is Chad Fenshaw with the Garrison Holmes 49 Camry. And actually not a bad run for a very small car. Believe it or not, Greg Biffle and Elliot are the bottom two cars of tonight's field. Here is Greg Galdi and the Panini Ford Mustang. Eh, oh squeaky over there gets around Christopher Bell. And for those wondering and keep it score at home, championship implications for Martin Truex Jr. Is, it is guaranteed he's not going to get any points tonight. So that basically means if Kyle Busch holds on to this, he's going to gain 10 points on that 19 car. And Boyer is going to only, well, Boyer's going to gain 9 points on So, I mean, that, it's really sinking deep for the Truex uh, championship hopes. Here is Reed Sorensen in the Advent Health Chevrolet Camaro. Shot out of a cannon. The 77 gets around Bubba. And that 77 car finished second here at Texas earlier this season. The Chrome looks so good on this Elliott Sadler Ford Motorsport Ford. Let's see what this cat can do. Still no DNFs. He'll get around Nemechek. Well, folks, we have six cars left to go. Here's Ryan Priest in the Kingsford. Chevrolet Camaro. Big oof. Here is the 82 car of Harrison Burton. Let's see what this cat can do. And Burton gets around Newman. Brand new car alert. Here is Daniel Suarez in the Comscope. Toyota Camry. It's got some speed in it, but he'll get around the 34 car, McDowell. And for those who are keeping score at home, uh, the, the top 10 are the only cats who get points. So if you're in 10th place, you get one point. First place gets 10 points. That 39 car over there, exiting turn four, that is the final car in the top 10. So if you're one of these last three cars, you have to pass the 39 to get points tonight. There's a lot of championship implications. Keep in mind, guys, there's only 50 points available after tonight. With five races to go, 10 points maximum per race, championship eliminations are coming. Here is Brennan Poole in the R.E.D. Chevrolet Camaro. And uh, Brennan Poole gets around Busher. Let's see what the number 57 of Dominic Conoreski can do here at Texas Motor Speedway. Two cars to go. Kyle Busch is on his own zip code. And the 57 car gets around McDowell. Here we go, folks. The final car tonight. Well, it's uh, number five for Little Wrangler 3. Andrew Keaton, the beaten and battered car that won Bristol. This thing's got chips all over it. It's a custom die cast. And uh, announcing something pretty cool tonight. Um, the goal for next year, guys, 3,500 subscribers. Can we do it? Y'all have been absolutely amazing. I love y'all so much. Thank y'all so much for supporting the NASCAR Duras Cup Series. And if you want to see Season 4, I will do it, okay? But you got to support the series. So giving a video a big thumbs up, continuing to subscribe, and of course hitting that notification bell. Nothing but love over here. I appreciate it, guys, so much. I do all this for y'all. I do these die-cast races. They take all day to build the track, all day to edit. I mean, it's incredible, guys. So here's the five car of Andrew Keaton, otherwise known as Little Wrangler 3. He won Bristol in this car. Will it be Keaton or will it be Kyle Busch? Someone's about to win a big Texas race, and I might add a very clean one at that. No DNFs after having over 30 cars DNF'd uh, between the last two races. Here we go, folks. Chevy versus Toyota. And a five car. Well, unfortunately, it's getting kind of slow here. He's going to get around the 10 car, but not enough for a top 10. It is Kyle Busch. Out of the woodwork, steals a victory and keeps his championship hopes alive. Martin Trucks Jr., Kevin Harvick, Denny Hamlin, a lot of cats lose a lot of points. Holy cow, folks, what a awesome Darl S. Cup Series race. High speed, very clean action, and I've got to say, there was a lot of battling for this win here. I mean, wow. Kyle Busch comes out of the woodwork with one of the fastest laps of the season. I mean, just absolutely smoked him. And this car has only been ran, like, what, twice? Maybe three times? Wow, it's been ran, I think, since season one. But, I mean, it is a mint, pristine car because it's only brought out here to Texas for the patriotic event. But Austin Dillon, this was his race to win, man. I mean, he took it from Boyer, and Boyer took it from Cole Custer. But Kyle Busch, I mean, wow, destroyed the field tonight. And uh, that's his second Darlene's Cup Series win. And he keeps his championship hopes alive because... 
Truex loses 10 points to him, but Boyer, you know, he gained two points on him. Boyer still very much alive in this Season 3 championship. And keep in mind, this is the exact same die cast that won the Nap Auto Parts 500 here at Texas Motor Speedway this season. So both Texas winning cars right here, both die casts, um, they're right there on the top three. And Cole Custer, great run for this Haas car. I mean, Look, he ran his car at the 500, got second place in it, qualified on pole tonight, held on for the fourth place. What a great job right there for the 41 bunch. And this car finished second earlier this season at Texas. Reed Sorensen, I mean, he had a shot to win tonight. Top five, absolutely great job right there. This 43 car, guys, is one of the fastest cars in Duralas Cup Series racing that no one's talking about. That is a great car. Attaboy to the 43 camp. And Bubba, that was a great race for him there and uh, check this out both of the buffet racing south cars the very lightweight lane built number 82 car finds a way to get yet another top 10 coming home in the seventh place keep in mind only top 10 get points that's why we show the top 10 you know because kyle bush gets 10 points ninth eighth seventh you know six points five points four points etc three more cars here in the top 10 ryan newman your all-star winner he picks up a little bit of points, but I, I think Newman's championship hopes are kind of faded, um, considering, yeah, he gains on Truex a little bit, but I mean, Boyer, he loses five to him. I mean, it's so hard to make up these points, guys. And keep in mind, there's only five Duralas Cup Series races left, five of the season. Here is William Byron, who came home in ninth place. Great run for that car right there. Look, he hasn't won a race this season, but man, what a stout top 10 run. He needs that to keep his championship hopes alive. This car right here ran at the Season 2 Lone Star 500, right? The Patriotic event. This car finished like, what, like 30th, 20th, something like that? It pooped a duck. I worked so hard to build this car, and it pooped a duck. Well, guess what? I went back to it. I started working on it again, and I wanted to run it again in this race because I felt like it deserved a second shot. Sure enough, that car nets a 10th place finish after the improvements to it. So that's really cool right there. But, you know, I mean, what a great night of racing. Yeah, there was no DNFs, but I think we've all had plenty of DNFs when you consider the last two races, the All-Star and the Daytona uh, night race. I mean, incredible amount of uh, damage done in those events. But in this one, very clean, fast lane racing and uh, just a good Dural Ass Cup Series race tonight. So Kyle Busch gets his second race win of course his only win thus far this season but he definitely keeps his championship hopes alive he's got to keep stacking points but you gotta think about it there's five races left to go each race you can earn a maximum of 10 points so there's 50 points on the table now you're not going to get 50 points it's just it, it just it would take a gargantuan miracle to win five races in a row but realistically 35 points 30 points that's probably the maximum you're going to be able to get because of how many different die casts run and how unscripted these races are guys so anyone can win it um definitely he's in the championship hunt now he's got to keep the momentum up and the next nascar dross cup series race well it's gonna be our first one of 2021 january 17th the richmond 400 that's gonna be a fun uh richmond race course go back to the last time we went to richmond it was jimmy johnson taking the win from kevin harvick uh, could kevin harvick finally get that win at Richmond, he, he literally was two cars away from doing it, and then Stenhouse did the Watusi, but uh, definitely, uh, he's got a great shot at it. It'll be January 17th, Richmond 400. You're going to want to tune in. It'll be our first broadcast for 2021. I want to say thank you all so much for tuning in uh, this whole season and this whole year for Diecast Buffet. We've, we've accomplished so many amazing things, guys, and... Uh, 2,500 subscribers. If you'd have told me in 2018 when I had 50 subscribers, I would ever get to 100. I'd have said, you're crazy. 2,500 subscribers is just a God-given miracle. I I pray every day that the channel keeps growing. And um, I want to say thank y'all so much. For the bottom of my heart, I truly appreciate it. I do these diecast races for y'all. They're, they're an absolute pain in the butt to film because you got to do all kinds of editing and lighting effects, you know. But... To capture the unscripted diecast racing action that diecast buffet started on literally the channel started with the the, the Dura Ice cup series back in 2018 so so i say thank y'all so much i look for great things in the next year i wish you all a blessed night and for the voice of the nascar Dura Ice cup series i'm garrett hodge kyle bush is a victory line signing off
This has been a presentation of the NASCAR Duralast Cup Series on Diecast Buffet.